Hello, everybody, and welcome to the January 4th Trips and Traps. Andy Sterling, joined by Eric Donovan. Full slate to bring in this week with that long week of racing that we had uh, last week. All uh, state breads will feature, and uh, we'll get things started right away here with the fifth race from December 26th. This was the first race back after the Christmas break. First two days, big inside tracks. Yeah, it's important for us to discuss. As you see, one of the horses we're talking about, the five kind of stumbled. We're talking about all three of these horses, the 576, the six wise guy, a first-time starter, the seven privatized, a first-time starter. Both the 26th and 27th, and we'll show one race from each day, were enormous, strong inside side tracks and both in this race all the horses we're going to feature had wide trips you see ending into the turn the five and seven are three and a half four wide sort of out here now the six horse actually managed for the moment to have got, gotten itself inside that will change very much eric on the back stretch that will indeed as uh, the uh, six horse in here wise guy does tip to the outside and about the five path and try to make a, a five wide move that uh, you know a little, little look like he's running in quicksand along with the others when they when they turn for home in here but this is a race where you had uh, two Fairly big priced horses. The uh, the winner is the uh, second horse right now, Alkalite in the green silks, and the uh, second uh, the second place finisher is the leader right now, 20 to one shot. He's uh, he has charm. Yeah, it, it was very hard to do much business if you weren't down on the inside. In this case, the stalker was so much the best. It does manage to do okay, but we saw a lot of horses spinning their wheels outside. Now, 476, a little bit of a bobble to start. And a rider, uh, the rider really had this horse in sort of lousy position the entire way, chasing three wide. You've got Privatize, who's four wide chasing the whole way. And here comes the clever move on the six horse wise guide. I, I, I don't know. Maybe this is a first time star. They just wanted to need a race going long the first time. But all three of these horses were badly compromised by their trips and the way the racetrack was playing. Now watch them, watch them as they come around the turn here and they turn for home. It's going to look like those three horses uh, 76, Wise Guide, and Privatize. It looks like they're running on a different racetrack here because they're all losing ground at this point where all the inside horses in the one and two path are all kind of passing them. It's like two different races going on here. Yeah, that's a very interesting point, Eric. And, you know, if you watch the first the first start for 76, this is a horse that can run a little bit. And uh, it's the racetrack that's making these horses look ordinary. And you know, there was a day last week, I think it was on Monday maybe, where there were three horses coming back off of wide trips uh, on, on this 26th card, and every one of them won. And none of them Look particularly good on paper. These horses will run completely different races the next time they run. And this is how you can make money in the track because looking at them on paper, it appears they ran terribly, but the bias prevented them from having any fair chance whatsoever. Good point. A lot of these horses have come back and, uh, and run quickly, at least uh, you know through the first week back. Uh, we'll see, I'm sure, a lot more of them come back the uh, second week back. And we'll go down to the 27th. This is uh, Thursday. Race number six we'll take a look at. And there's a horse that's uh, on the rail most of the way, running Dub Dub, who's going to take a lot of interest in here and probably be bet heavily next time out. Not so sure that you want this uh, this, this two-year-old filly next time out. Yeah, there's rub a dub dub Here's the five horse who will end up making a three-wide move. That's Desert Traveler. That horse had a lot of chances. Here's a first-time star, the seven horse, She's Stone Sis, a first-time star for Bruce Levine, a half to bust, and Stones entered for a tag. But that horse is a bit outside. Desert War Traveler is definitely outside. rub a dub dub the one that a lot of people like, thought Ramon went to sleep. I don't agree, and I think Eric doesn't agree. Feels like this horse just drifted out of the race, made its big run late on the Rail. Seems like he starts to get a little bit green here down the back stretch where he's just kind of losing contact with that uh, lead group and he's going to drop back in here. And you're going to think, you know, at, at some point in the race that, you know, this horse is really not going to do any running whatsoever and, and not be a factor in the race run of Dub Dub as he's down on the inside uh, in fourth right now. There's a traveler sitting third uh, in that three wide path. Of course, not the picture. She's stone sis uh, toward the back there in about uh, the, uh, three the three path. path. Yeah, outside the four. I'm sorry, Eric. You know, it's also interesting to note that none of these horses are around at the end. So you had, you, you had uh, Desert Traveler making the premature wide move. You have She Stone Sis moving into it. The winner, of course, comes up the rail. She Stone Sis is on the outside, but Rub a Dub Dub back here on the rail, and the rally will be as the race falls apart late, but also a horse who is riding that golden rail. And this is a big close, and I think a lot of people are going to like this move here. It's a first-time starter that you know made up six, seven lengths in the stretch, perhaps, and uh, you know just misses here. And I think uh, you know Johnny I calling the race. You know he called the four a clear winner at this. Yeah. Point here, and then he had to, you know, reverse course late here. His runner dub dub makes his big finish down on the inside. This is a horse that's going to be a short price next time out and did ride the rail, which was the place to be. Yeah, I'm going to be against this horse in all likelihood next time out. I mean, obviously, the field may not come up that strong, but I think this race really bears watching. These horses could even be in against each other in subsequent starts. And I know Desert Travelers had a number of starts, but I think he's the one that actually may have run the best of any. Yeah, he was up on the pace there, chasing right. three wide. Chasing got left a little bit, chased three wide, and I think ran very well. Rub a dub dub. 
could be a trap. It could be. We'll uh, turn our attention now to uh, December 30th. Race number five, the track seemed to even out uh, later on in the week, but uh, still no cure for a, uh, a slow break and a, a big five, four, five wide rush move. Yeah, I mean, you see what happens here with My Way or Dubai Way. Doesn't get out well in here, spots him, and makes this wide, premature move, and the race collapsed late. My problem with what, what My Way or Dubai Way, and Eric and I talked about this, is he's had his chance. He's not very good, but my gosh, if you assembled this same field again, I would take a short price that he would beat these horses. Yeah, I mean, you, you could be looking at him in two to one, five to two range uh, next time out, uh, you know, against a similar type of group. But, uh, I mean, he's already kind of made it up to the lead here, battling four wide as they go into the turn. And is actually going to, you know, get the lead going into the turn here. Source has done a lot of running in the first half mile. Uh, he, was, he was just an hour and a half the best in here. And the other thing to keep in mind, Eric, is this race basically collapsed at the end. I mean, Derek Jeter, who was up early, he's sort of, he's the heavy, heavy favorite. He kind of drops out of the race. Sunrise Lover was back in seventh early. The horse who finished fourth was way back in the pack down there. So this race was collapsed. I think you would argue that My Way or Dubai Way is actually the horse that collapsed collapse the race. Yeah, by making that move and, and forcing those other speed horses to run quick, he did collapse the race, but he didn't collapse himself. I mean, he stays on here, and, and you know what? I think he should have won this race by about four or five lengths. I got to tell you, if you bet on this horse, and he was almost he was almost five to one, I mean, you just got to, you might still be banging your head against the wall, because there's no doubt he was an hour and a half the best in here. Maybe it's a signal that he's moving his for, form a little bit forward, because this is a much better race than he's ever run before. Still, he has had a few chances, and he is a little bit on the mediocre side. But maybe he's taking a step forward because there's no doubt if he runs this race back, he, he they will have to be a lot better than the horses he ran against here for him to lose. I agree. We'll uh, take a look at the seventh race now from December 30th. This is uh, a state bred one of the then allowance optional claimer for Phillies and Mares that featured a uh, new uh, Michael Dub horse. Uh, horse and a bad start. Time. It's very hard to know. It feels like the nine came out, then the eight came out after it forced it out. Whatever the case, while the nine will have trouble, Sassity is the one by watching the head on, despite what you see in the pan, that was really eliminated. As you see, Ramon is sort of steadying back with Sassity right into here. And while she doesn't have much speed, you don't know what she could have done in this race had she broken cleanly because she's totally taken out of the race, as it was, Eric. I thought Birdhouse, by the way, is the eventual winner at a very big price. And not a horse that we're talking about for trips and traps, but a horse that got an exceptional ride by Arad Ortiz. Did, did get an exceptional ride off a long layoff. This one hadn't run since February of uh, 2012, and uh, coming back going six furlongs as well. Uh, kept up in the game down inside by Ortiz, who's riding real well uh, here on the inner track. And uh, just, uh, you know, a race that uh, I thought uh, was kind of tricky to get a read on Sassity here because not so sure that Sassity does a whole ton of running here, but obviously the way the break happened, I mean, she was kind of eliminated at the start. I, I, that's just the way I look at it, Eric. It's very hard to know. Here's Sassity now moving up in the rail to two path, and the track was even by then. And she'll make a little bit of a run at the race before she badly flattens out. I almost wonder if Ramon realized he's sort of doesn't really have much fair chance. You see he's trying to get her to the outside and trying to get her to run and rally. She stops doing that. I just wonder if she's a horse that took a lot of now. She's a much shorter price here at, at three to one than she would have been because the favorite scratched the gate. But she took a lot of money off of the trainer change to Tony Dutra coming off the layoff. I think if you liked her in here, you can give her another chance because she never had a fair chance in the running of the race. I agree with you. I think that's a, a fair uh, assumption. Wouldn't want to take too short a price on her, though, just because she broke slowly. Oh, no, I don't disagree with that. I think you have to evaluate the race. And if, like me, you thought she had a good chance in this race, and she is a horse that's got one win in, I think, eight seconds in, in about 20 starts now. So she is a little camera shy. But she's almost a first-time Doni Dutro in her next start. We'll take a look now at uh, New Year's Eve, race number eight. This is a, a New York Red one of them going long, mile and 70 yards. We're going to take a look at the two anaphylaxis and the 10 Reggie D who is stretching out here. Anaphylaxis stays out of the start and makes a big run from way back. Reggie D is one of the speeds in here. And I thought this was a lax ride by the rider in here who makes no attempt to be aggressive early. And you got the outside post. If he had been aggressive, he would have made the nine horse windowful run or faster and they could have separated from the field. Instead, by being unaggressive, he gets hung out four to five wide the first turn. You've got back here, the horse we'll talk about later, Anaphylaxis, who ran very well. This was a track, I think, as the day went on, that very much was sort of not a huge inside bias, but very favorable to speed and horses with inside positions. Reggie D has hung out wide the whole way, and basically his rider just gives up on him on the backstretch area. Yeah, uh, the rider's indecision here really puts him in the worst spot. I mean, he could have been, if he sent hard, you know, the pace could have been faster, but he could have been sitting second right off uh, right off the leader windowful here. Or if he decided to take back, he could have saved some more ground going into the first turn. He wouldn't have ended up five wide down the backstretch, and at this point, it just wraps up on him. Yeah, and 
and and and and we're not going to show you all the head on, but he 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 gives up on this horse. You could you can watch the replay, and, and I actually spoke to his trainer. I mean, he he didn't doesn't believe there's any issue with the horse. So hopefully we'll see him back in going forward. But he he just was given absolutely no shot. And maybe he doesn't want to go long, and maybe he wouldn't run well. But you'd like to know. And this is one of the points you've got to be aggressive with outside posts in these two turn races, especially if you have some speed. Put some separation in the field and give yourself a chance to get inside. As it turns out, Windiful is able to wire the field in a fairly moderate pace. He got an extremely good ride by Fiona Velasquez. You see the gray moving up here on the outside. This is the eventual second place finisher, Anna Falaxic. When you look at the dynamics of this race, Anna Falaxic ran extremely well to finish second. Did run well, and he's been in good form uh, for trainer Pablo Hizzo as well, running three nice races since uh, the turf season essentially ended for him. Uh, he came back uh, off the in a uh, tur in a dirt race rather on November 14th in the Stallion Series and ran a big uh, race behind Sports Rider 29 to one. So this is a horse with some talent. Right price, right spot, he's definitely worth a bet. Yeah, I, you know, we need, horses like him need a much fairer track and, 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 and a little bit of aggression in the riding. I and mean, it wasn't that slow a pace, just a very good job by Cornelio Velasquez controlling the pace. And Cornelio's been very much attuned this winter to how the track is playing. And he's been a lot more aggressive, I think, on horses, and it's aided him a lot, and that's why he's doing so well. One more race to bring you, another New York red. Not a New York red race, though. It was a $15,000 open claimer for Phillies and Mares going six. We're going to take a look at the three, Apoletta. Yeah, Apoletta gets eliminated the break. The four horse comes in and just slams into her and shuts her off. As we go back to the pan, you're going to see very quickly what happens to Apoletta after the start. So Apoletta is completely eliminated. Now, keep in mind, she's a horse who actually has speed. And so she's eliminated from the start. And the other thing is, watch this race. This was a merry-go-round race. Ali Reeven goes to the lead. Kiki Chaser sits second. They run one-two around the track. The third finisher, the long shot, Miss Libby, right there. In fact, Rough Winter is the only one that made an effective move coming from way back in the pack and finishing fourth. Ran very, very well in here. But it's Apoletta who gets eliminated at the start and ends up full of run towards the end of the race and is really flying at the end and only loses by about three lengths. Yeah, a horse that uh, seemed to be doing okay for Tom Bush, breaking a maiden for 20000 and then trying a tougher uh, state bread. One of the then going long, turned back here to go uh, six furlongs and also dropping in class as well. So this was a good spot for Apoletta. Unfortunately, she was eliminated at the start. Yeah, she, she probably wins this race. She gets, she gets a clean break. And you see her out in the two path here making her run. And you watch her down towards the inside. And you see a rider, uh, Junior Alvarado, in this case, never really gives up on her. He's trying. He realizes he doesn't have much chance. She's lugging in a little bit towards the inside. But he's trying with her to get her back in the race. She's the only one besides Rough Winter making any kind of impact in a slow-paced race that held together. Together, and after the wire, she was just eating up horses. She probably could have won this race, and it feels like, unlike a lot of these horses, Eric, she's relatively lightly raced, and she may be coming to look. She's no superstar. She is what she is, but she may be coming to hand for Tom Bush and moving forward a little bit. Absolutely, she could have been in a perfect spot there. She broke and well. She could have been right behind the speed, sitting, you know, third, and uh, maybe have been able to make a run and pass those horses. I, I think she would have, as it turned out. But whatever we think, we'd like to know what you think. Trips and traps at NairaInc.com. Thanks for watching.